Good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So last night's Apple earnings were uh, certainly kind of interesting where we saw a stronger growth in iPhone sales but weaker take up in China which caused Apple shares to initially tick up and then actually end up slightly lower by the end of the session. Looking at the US 30, you can see that there's not a huge amount of activity as we head into tonight's FOMC session, which is widely expected not to show any increase in interest rates and in fact not to actually give too much clarity as to the next rate hike. Some traders are hoping for December uh, to take advantage of a stronger US dollar, especially when quantitative easing is taking place across the rest of Europe and potentially over in Asia. But many traders still believe that it will be early 2016 before the US is strong enough to justify any rate hike. But nevertheless, uh, that is a very important um, figure that is due out and you don't want to miss that. So that's due later on in tonight's session, right about 7 p.m. So looking at the US 30, we are drifting towards 17,561, which is potential support. Other technicals are overbought with a slight divergence showing where we might get a crossover on some of those important um, kind of sell signal levels, such as the 70% level on the RSI and the 80% level on the slow stochastic. Moving on to the UK 100, a uh, very different picture to what we've actually seen there in uh, the US, where we've already just come off a few days of, uh, of negative candles. Um, yesterday was quite bad because commodity prices have taken a little bit of a tumble, if I'm completely honest, with crude oil and gold kind of lower, co uh, copper lower as well. And we're getting close to that 21 period SMA. 6,300 is the potential support. Uh, and the other technicals, we've got a negative crossover on the MACD with a histogram just about to show. We've not had the crossover yet, but very close, whereas the slow stochastic obviously came off there earlier on uh, last week. Moving on to Japan 225. Um, another negative day yesterday, slight bounce this morning. We're in between two ranges. 18,648 potential support. Other technicals relatively neutral with the slow stochastic just about across the 80% level um, with 19,104 being potential resistance. Japan 225 is not that exciting at the moment. Moving on to dollar yen. Uh, another negative day yesterday is people were buying the safe haven yen to hedge against the sell-off in equity markets. Whereas if you look at it today, we're not really doing a huge amount either. Uh, 119 spot 76 is the short term potential support. Um, though, um, if you look at some of these levels here, you could arguably have that as a broken resistance, and we're maybe on the wrong side of it right now. Maybe you could take 120 spot 55 as being a level of interest, which would also coincide with that 55 period SMA. So, moving on to West Texas crude, which is probably the one that most traders are looking at. Um, if you're look, looking for a commodity play right now, we were down much lower earlier on in the session to have a late rally, almost a hammer formation, but it's been followed up by yet another negative day so far. 41 spot, oh, $42 is a potential support level. This is a very strategic level for West Texas crude. It was a low of March. Uh, if we get closer to there again, that will be an interesting level uh, for traders to keep an eye on. Then having a quick look at gold, uh, Actually, gold ticked up yesterday. It's ticked up a bit higher this morning. Again, a kind of unusual move, but I guess coming before the FOMC, maybe some people are uh, buying it as a hedge against uh, some surprise from there. Um, 1168 remains to be the uh, potential support slash resistance level. Other technicals are kind of all over the place right now. Gold's a really tough one to get a handle on, I think. Certainly looking at it from a, from a trend wise, you say, well, it's in the middle of an uptrend. This could be a retracement and then move higher. Um, but it, with, in the backdrop of what's happening elsewhere in the world, I would have expected gold to be much higher than it is already. So uh, it's a very ambiguous move right now on the yellow metal. Looking at euro dollar, however, on the wrong side, one spot 11. Uh, this looks vulnerable should the FOMC surprise tonight with some bullish or hawkish comments about December. Uh, or just more clarity as to the Fed stance and rates in general might have some interesting impacts on uh, euro dollar. Um, so one spot 11, very strategic. Finishing up with GBP USD, uh, it's also moving a little bit lower, maybe almost in a kind of a downward channel formation. It does feel like we could be in a kind of descending triangle uh, pattern right there. Um, with one spot 51.85 being potential support, we still have our sloping trend line moving lower. We're trading below both moving averages, that's negative. The MACD is crossing the zero line, that's negative. And we had a bearish cross 
over of the 80% level in the slow stochastic just a couple of sessions ago. From a technical perspective, GBPUSD doesn't look that bullish, but obviously the macro data events can have a big impact on that. It's in the middle of two ranges right now, which makes it always tough to trade, um, but certainly from a technical, purely technical perspective, things are beginning to stack up against cable. So economic data wise, you do of course have your crude oil inventories and don't forget about your FOMC announcement tonight. The rate is gonna be, it's gonna remain the same, but remember, it's all about the statement. And then tomorrow, uh, Thursday, you've got UK house prices, uh, employment claims, GDP data, consumer CPI from Germany, housing index, loads of data due on Thursday. So make sure you don't forget about that. So keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward. Lots of really cool information on here from our global analyst team. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.